Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are in the world or in or an restful evening. I want to, I'm getting messages from several saying we hear that there's a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, the IDF. Brothers and sisters, I haven't heard that. So if you have any links, that would be great. But what I'm getting that for a second night in a row, there are airstrikes um, going on from Hamas to Israel. Israel has responded, the IDF, with strikes on Hamas targets. And this is, we're, we're two days now. So that's the latest I have on it. We do know that things are heating up. They, the tensions have flared dramatically since President Trump, during Purim, declared that Israel has sovereign rights over the Golan Heights. And as I've reported before, that's where you have natural gas and oil and great resources that other leaders in the world really want to get their hands on. They're just not coming out and saying that. That's why back in the fall of 2018, the UN condemned Israel's occupation of the Golan Heights. If you remember, uh, a couple weeks before the Trump administration declared Israel's sovereign rights over the Golan Heights, in their annual report, they changed it from Israeli occupied, which many nations in the UN was saying they have no right to be there. That's been since 1967, during the war when they took it from Syria. And they changed to Israeli control, which that in and of itself was a significant change. Then, when President Trump came out publicly during Purim, it's very significant, and said, Israel has sovereign rights over the Golan Heights. That, that was huge. I believe it's just a matter of time before the domino falls and we see Isaiah 17 fulfilled where Damascus will end in ruins. I believe that Iran, with its proxies Hamas, as they're doing now, and Hezbollah, are, are with the smart devices. Listen, since 2015, when then-President Obama pushed and endorsed and signed the JCPOA, that what we refer to as the Iran, as the Iran nuke deal, I said back then, it's just a matter of time. That was a, he signed basically for the destruction of Israel. That's what Iran wants. So they have continued. There are other nations that signed that deal. Even though Trump withdrew, and not immediately, because, excuse me, it was every six months that he would have to uh, basically endorse that or pull out of it. <clears throat> other countries, other nations are still into that deal. And Iran is still gearing up its nuclear arsenals. Brothers and sisters, it is a matter of time before we see Isaiah 17, Damascus come in ruins, and then Ezekiel 38. But God himself will protect Israel. It's guaranteed. It's in the word of God. It's a sure thing. So, I wanted to bring you that breaking news update. Also, what a day. What a day for me. The vitriol and the hatred that's being poured out right now. Not just against me, but against others who preach the gospel of grace. Yesterday I did videos. I shared how there are over 200 verses that talk about salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. His atoning work on the cross of Calvary. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, lest anyone should boast. We are not saved by works. We are not kept by works. We are saved for works. People try to say that because we preach easy believism or we preach gospel of grace that we're just making an excuse to freely sin. That is the farthest thing from the truth. In fact, for the, for the man and woman who comes to faith in Christ, all sufficient work on the cross. 
he shed his precious blood, always having existed as part of the eternally self-existent God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt, the ransom price for our sins. I am thankful for that. I will continue with my last breath. And by the way, death threats came in. There's a hit on my head. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care. You, to live is Christ, to die is gain. I'm really not worried. The, just the vitriol, the hatred, and I have moderators who have reported, I know it's been well over 40 comments that they had to take down, but they couldn't prevent the comments that came to me through email. They, they weren't able to prevent, and it's okay, because God's got it, but God. I'm not sharing that with you to create drama. I'm sharing that with you because I know that others are getting the very same thing. There are three things primarily. There, there's hatred for other things. I mean, I could say the sky looks beautiful today, and there'd be comments about it. Um, my Star of David that I wear, right? I never... This is mine. Uh, I get hatred because of my Jewish heritage. I consider myself a new creation in Christ Jesus, but because of my Jewish heritage, I, I get uh, hatred and vitriol. It, it's okay. I forgive and I love and I'm not going to walk in offense. But there are many who believe, they, and some of you honestly believe that it's you, you'll come back and we should not have idols. This is not an idol. I don't worship this. But it has value to me, and it's mine. And I've gotten many who have said, well, if that offends your brother, you shouldn't do it. Does this hoodie offend some people? I got a comment today in an email about how evil this hoodie was. I don't even know how anybody could do that. So do you see how ridiculous it can get? And it's, I'm not saying, it's not just me. It's anyone if we put ourselves out there. And I know that in this season, if we are going to be bold and share the gospel of grace, and we need to. I'm telling you, the Lord is saying now. Jesus is saying now. So now there's going to be people who go out there and say, there'll be videos about me. They'll take snippets of it. I'm not setting a day nor hour. I am saying we are in the season. And prophetically, we are in the final moments of the end of days. When you look at the days of creation, I've done teaching on this, so I'm not going to go into great detail. When you look at the six days of creation, I will tell you, I'm going to challenge some of you, not with a heaven or hell issue. I'm not going to do a Bible study tomorrow morning or Thursday morning. I'm going to have the Bible study that I'm doing at church tomorrow night taped live, and you can watch that. So that will be around 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Central standard time. I am really going to challenge some of you. I believe what I'm sharing. It's from the word of God. If you don't agree with it, it's okay, but it's uh, it's something that you probably have not heard of, or if you, maybe some of you have, but often when I've taught on this, many people say, I never saw it that way. I never knew it that way. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to, you'll have to join us. The hatred, the vitriol. So there are three areas that I get it for. First and foremost is that I do not believe that we are kept by works. I, I don't. <laughs> we are saved by grace through faith, praise God. When Christ shed his blood on the cross at Calvary, it was all sufficient. When I, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with a heart that man believes, believes, and is justified 100%. And it's with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. We believe, we confess, we, we confess because we believe, hallelujah. I do. I, I, when someone comes to faith in Christ, we water baptize them, but they are not saved by that. I don't know any other way to share it than I already have. Again, I've done videos on this. I've shared videos on it. I praise God. Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. Praise God. You can't take it away from me. Glory to God. I, 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 I did a video on Acts 2.38 today and exegeted and explained it. You can go back and look at it. Many of you use that. 
The passage in Hebrews, if you continue to sin knowingly, then there's no more remission of sin. The apostle, the, the author was writing to the Jewish people who were putting their faith not just in Christ, but in the animal sacrifices. And the word is saying, there will be no more blood of bulls and goats. It's not needed. The blood of Jesus was sufficient once and for all. If you don't believe that, there's no more sacrifice for sin that's going to be made. It was already done. If you believe that you are saved by faith plus anything else, plus works, that's not putting your faith solely on what Jesus did. It's all about what he did. The people that I know, I was five, that come to faith in Christ and his atoning work, in Christ alone, they grow. That sanctification, they're fully justified. They, they continue to grow. And, and eventually one day we're, you know, we're going to be get our glorified bodies, our glorification. So justification, sanctification, glorification. Praise God. The people that I know that know that freedom in Christ, they have such a heart for him. I, I shared this example before. I've had the privilege of driving race cars. Not a lot, but I've had the privilege. And we all know from my speeding tickets, I like to go fast. First time I was in a race car and you're going around a track, it's it was natural tendency to want to look at the wall so that I don't hit the wall. And the mentor forcefully turned my head, would not let me look, said, keep, you know, you keep going fast. Do not look. And later explained to me, if you look at the wall and focus on the wall, you're more likely to hit the wall. Think about this. If you're saved, you're saved. But what you focus on is, oh no, I gossiped. Oh no, I took that pen I shouldn't take. Oh no, I lied. And you're so focused on the very thing, iniquity, is your bent towards sin. We all have it. I, I, I'll i give you an example. There, pornography is increasing at an, an alarming rate within the body of Christ. And for, here's another, I'm not going to say their names, but the denominations that are litigious, that are into legalism, do you know the rates of incest and fornication and adultery are greater in those denominations than among believers who believe in the gospel of grace? Do you know that Paul said in Galatians 1, 8, and 9, any other gospel that's preached is accursed? And I believe that's the doctrine of demons that have people bound up in that lie. And I know I'm going to get comments and get people upset, but I, I'm telling you the truth because God loves you and I love you. I want you to know the truth. You can reject that truth, but I, I still love you and I take no offense in it. I praise God that if I were to die today and stand before God and he were to say, why should I let you into my heaven? The precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no double jeopardy in heaven. I've used this example. I've used it with my associate pastor, Greg McLean, in sermons. If, say I made Pastor Greg really mad, I'm the lead pastor, but boy, I got him mad. And he said, I'm going to get him back. And I can get excited when I preach. So he sits in the front row. There have been a couple times when I've come down and my kids have often said that's the splash zone. So you get it because I'm really excited. And uh, so it would be easy for Pastor Greg to get my DNA. You know, he could just have a cup. Ah, there he goes. I got his DNA. And he frames, he makes it look like I murdered him. And he goes off with his wife, Jackie, and they're off in the Caribbean floating in inner tubes, drinking drinks with little umbrellas in them. And I don't drink alcohol, by the way. Um, that's my personal choice. Drunkenness is a sin, but, um, but I'm not going to go into that whole debate over alcohol. Drunkenness is a sin. I don't drink, though. I chose not to. And that's right for me. But anyway, Pastor Greg and Jackie are floating around and, and they're living life. He frames his he frames his murder. He makes it look like I murdered him. Jackie gets a life insurance and off they go to the Caribbean. They're out of here and they're just enjoying life. And I go to prison. 
but I do, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm cleaning the toilets good. I'm serving the food. I'm doing all the right things. And I get a judge who's merciful. I, I get a, uh, what do you call the guy, you know, the warden who's, who's merciful. And they say, you know what? We're going to let Tim out early on good behavior. And so I get out. I've been accused, arrested, convicted, and imprisoned. And I get out. Do you know that I could go find Pastor Greg in the Caribbean? I could, with a beach full of people, I could shoot him and kill him in front of all those people. And I could not. There's no way. There's no double jeopardy. That cannot be held against me because I've already been convicted and served my time for that. Do you know when Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5.21, became sin, that we might can become the righteousness of God, our sin was imputed to him, his righteousness imputed to us. When he did that, it can never be held against us again. It was paid for. It was paid for. All my sins, my past, my present, and my future. Does that mean I'm giving myself a license to go sin or making an excuse to go sin? No, by no means. The Apostle Paul talked about that. In fact, because of that freedom, I, knowing that grace and loving God, I, I want to do works for him. But I'm not saved, nor am I kept by them. But the motive of my heart is because I love him. It's a personal relationship. What he did to me, I have access now. I'm an heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead abides in me. I've got resurrection power in me, praise God. All because of what Jesus did. I couldn't do it for myself. So I hope that helps answer that question once again, because I do love you. God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you fiercely and passionately. And we see the dominoes set around the world. What is going on in, in the Middle East right now? Again, I'm not sure where some of you are getting the reports that you're asking, but I have not heard that. If you have links or, or you want to share that, that's great. I'll update the family here. The three areas that I get the most hatred from. It's because I preach the gospel of grace. I think the second greatest area is anti-Semitism. Just an attack on me personally, just based on who I, who I am, my background, my heritage, my, and assumptions that are made about who I am even. The vitriol, the hatred is just spewing out. And then, because I believe that we are not, as 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, I believe it is, says we are not appointed unto wrath. I've shared teaching on the rapture of the church. <clears throat> I believe it is pre-tribulation. <clears throat> but you know what? That's not a heaven or hell issue. If you believe it's mid or post or it doesn't happen, if you believe on Jesus, if you are saved by grace through faith, one of us is going to be right. One of us is going to be wrong. I often say I'm going to be right. But even if I weren't, even if I weren't, we're saved and sealed. We're sanctified until the day of redemption, praise God. So the hatred, most of it is because I believe that, that he's, his blood, his precious blood shed, that he died, was buried, and rose from the dead. I believe that. I, I know that in every fiber of my being, and I praise him for it. Because I believe that truth from the word, over 200 verses, from the word, I've shared that word many times on here. I'm hated, probably most of all for that. Secondly, is because of who I am, the, the, the physical man who I am. And third would be because this is a channel that we believe in the imminent rapture, in the pre-tribulation rapture, that everything that has had to happen for, and I get so excited with this because it's soon, Jesus is saying to me now, I'm not saying now, right now, but it could be right now. What I'm saying is when you look, when you go back to Genesis and you look at the creation, the six days and the seventh day of rest, and a day is like a thousand years, it ties together, it's prophetic. So you had um, 2,000 years, what, to Abraham? That was significant. By the way, 
Star of Bethlehem was out for a couple years then. Then, 2,000 years to Jesus. That put us at the 4,000-year mark from the creation of man. By the way, Star of Bethlehem was out. Oh, at the creation of men. By the way, Star of Bethlehem was out. So you had it at the beginning, 2,000 years, when God called Abram, Abraham, and then 2,000 years to Jesus Christ. And now we, we've seen it again, I think, what, a year ago it ended? We are signified. We are in the end of that. We're, we're at the end. We're, we're around that 6,000-year period. And then we're going to have that seventh day, Daniel's 70th week, which is the 1,000-year millennial reign. But we're out of here, brothers and sisters. And as Thessalonians says, 4.13 the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, and then those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds, and we will forever be with the Lord, and we are told to encourage one another with this. I don't know about you. I, I want to occupy and redeem the time. I want to see as many people as saved as we can. I Praise God that I know our redemption draws nigh and soon, soon. There's an old song that we used to sing, right? Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Brothers and sisters, soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Well, listen, God bless you. Have an awesome rest of your day. One more time, God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too.